What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? This is your boy Chad bringing y'all another video, man. And this video was requested by my friend um, Z Zephy. Um, so yeah, shout out to Zephy for this video. I've also been seeing where like this is pretty important. So I was like, you know, I don't feel like talking about this, but we gonna talk about it. I got my notes here. I've done my little research. You feel me? But this video, we're going to be talking about the Silicon Valley Bank collapsing as well as there's another bank that collapsed. I'm not really too privy to what other bank has collapsed, but I do know that Silicon Valley Bank has collapsed, which if we're all being real, this is eye opening like a bank collapsed. And Silicon Valley Bank um, was for like the tech startup world. So different tech ventures in Silicon Valley would, you know, get loans from this bank. They would do business with this bank, just investing with the bank so that way they could, you know, have business. But you also have people like Jim Cramer who comes out here and literally like just a couple weeks ago, he was SVB Bank. We got this SVB Bank. And I'd say you guys should invest in it. The ninth best performer year to date is SVB Financial. Don't you want? This company's a merchant bank with a deposit base that Wall Street had been stakely concerned about. SVB is the old Silicon Valley Bank. Recently bought one of our favorite research firms, Buffett Nathanson, and it's become less dependent upon private equity and venture capitalist offerings. Wait a second. Those dried up last year, they could come back. Yes, some of them come back here with a stock directly affects an oversold position. Stock was the fourth worst performer in 2022. I think the fears were not justified, and it's a very compelling situation. Hey, by the way, long-term private equity and venture capital, they're not going away. Being the banker to these invest, immense pools of capital has always been a very good business. Stock's still cheap. Now, you have to remember that a stock that falls 66%, like SVB Financial did last year, well, it takes it a lot more to recover. After losing two-thirds of your value, you need a 200% gain to get back to even. This is arithmetic. Some people call it geometry. So you could argue SVB's nearly 40% rally this year is barely a drop in the bucket. And that's how I want you to think it. I think it's also a good example of why these bounce-back moves might be far from over. These stocks could have more room to run especially if you think they were driven down to artificially low levels by tax law selling, artificial dumping. Anything Jim Cramer puts his stamp of approval on, if you just say the opposite, you'll be up. He's called so much Fugazi stuff where he's like, I'd put money in that. I'd invest in that. This is mad money. And it's always been the complete opposite. Whatever he tells you don't invest in, if you invest, you're going to make money. Whatever he tells you to invest in, if you don't invest, you're going to make money. It's like, listen to Jim Cramer's just beyond dumb. He's been wrong about everything. He literally told people, yeah, buy SVG Bank uh, stock and you'll be good. Then it fails two weeks later. Um, so basically what happened to Silicon Valley Bank was a run on banks, um, which caused the collapse. Um, and basically what that is, is like this bank literally failed because... They didn't have enough cash on hand for their customers to withdraw. So at a certain point, customers wanted to go withdraw money. They didn't have enough cash on hand, which basically is them. It's basically in. Let me see what my notes is basically in insol an insolvency issue um, because the banks were forced to try to sell. So before I get into all that. Right. So basically. To make it kind of simple, they had liquidity issues. So basically, they had some debt that they could not pay. They had cash on hand. Um, they not they didn't have cash on hand. They didn't have cash on hand to pay customers. So what happened is you go into the bank. You're like, I want to withdraw my money. They're like, we can't allow you to withdraw your money because we don't have this cash on hand. A bunch of people are asking for this actual cash. They can't supply it. So now they have liquidity issues and the reason they become insolvent is because now the banks are like, well, we have to pay back somebody. We have to pay these people back. So what they do are just like everybody back in the day, I people still probably buy them, but like bonds, um, government issue bonds that, you know, have interest or cure. They sold all their bonds, which basically is the bank selling everything they have to try to pay everybody else, which directly results in solvency because if you're being forced to sell your bonds you're taking a loss because bonds are really like a i'm guaranteed this money 
and now you're selling that. So now you're taking a loss to pay off the customers and it's basically an insolvency issue um, and they can't pay their customers. Now, a lot of people are like, oh, this is crazy. And it definitely is. You know, the FDIC, they did say they insure up to $250,000 per account. But the thing about Silicon Valley Bank or SVB Bank um, is a lot of people, a lot of tech startups, a lot of companies, a lot of people have more than $250,000. Sorry, I'm trying to give me some Skittles. More than $250,000 in this bank. So basically, what is the FDIC going to insure? Like, you don't have my money. Where, Like, where is my money? If you only insure that a certain amount, where is the money? And a lot of people were already up in arms. Like, there's no way that this limit is this low because clearly if I'm banking with somebody, I'm a company, I'm a business, I'm a customer. If I have this much money, I need to be insured. Like, where, like who's going to take care of my money? Y'all you, are telling me that I just... Put more than two hundred and fifty thousand in the bank. The bank fails on their part. The managers fail. They lending out more money than they have cash on hand. They have all this debt. They can't give people their money back when they need to withdraw money. Then they have to sell their bonds, and basically the bank fails because it's insolvent. And it's like, so y'all just telling me that my money's just gone. And another thing um, that was you know kind of weird with this are a lot of um, CEOs took their monies out, took their, not monies, but took their money out the bank like two weeks before the collapse of this bank. So it's kind of like the CEOs kind of, I'm not going to say the CEOs and stuff new, but it's weird. Like it kind of goes back to how um, Sam Bankman freed with, I forgot the even name of it, FT Nice. Sam Bankman freed, I forgot the name of what collapsed with Sam Bankman free. Hold on. I don't know. I said FTC, but it's FTX. So Sam Bankman Free, basically like FTX, the difference between FTX is, well, it's really kind of no different. It's kind of the same thing, but this is different because this is a bank rather than like an actual like crypto platform. So it would be like if Bank of America failed because they didn't have the money to pay everybody their money. Then they sold all their bonds to try to make up for it. And then they go insolvent and they fail. So now I've also seen where... um Biden has now said that, you know, they're basically he came out here and I can show this in the clip because, you know, it is what it is. But Biden's come out here and he said that, you know, everybody's money is going to be, you know, they're going to be able to access to all their money. They want you to believe, believe in the banks. And that's kind of why people say like banks are too big to fail because the government's going to always bail out these banks. They're going to bail them out some way, somehow, because they want you to, in all honesty, believe in the banking system to make you think it works. And then when you have stuff like this, they say, oh, no, 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 no. Like, this is just this is just a failure on some different levels. It, this should have never happened, but it's happened. Like, you're a bank and you're failing. You literally go insolvent. But y'all are claiming banks are too big to fail. Like, the only way banks are not going to fail is if you bail them out, which the government does every time. So this kind of isn't like 2008. I mean, it kind of is. You can kind of like make the like correlation, but the banks, you know, are failing. And then, you know, Biden also said the taxpayers um, won't pay for this. And he was like, it's very important. He's like, it's very important. You know, taxpayers won't be footing the bill for, you know, this actual SVB collapse. Today, thanks to the quick action of my administration over the past few days, Americans can have confidence that the banking system is safe. Your deposits will be there when you need them. Small businesses across the country, the deposit accounts at these banks can breathe easier knowing they'll be able to pay their workers and pay their bills. And their hardworking employees can breathe easier as well. Last week, when we learned of the problems of the banks, and the impact they could have on jobs of small businesses and banking system overall. I instructed my team to act quickly to protect these interests. And in my opinion, right, him saying taxpayers won't pay for this. First off, he's reading off a teleprompter. I don't, I, I can't even tell if he even knows like anything about this. He's literally just squinting off in the distance and reading off a teleprompter. But besides that, it's just like, if taxpayers aren't going to pay 
to get these banks back up and running because they didn't know how to run themselves. That's why they failed. Who's going to be paying for it? And why are you even bringing taxpayers into the conversation if they're not going to be footing the bill for this? Like, you can say taxpayers aren't going to be paying this, um, blah, blah, blah. The banks are going to pay for this because they messed up. And it's like, no, like, that, that doesn't make sense. Like, we pay the bank. The only reason banks have money is because people put their money in the bank because they believe in the bank. And then the bank lends your money that you put in there to other people. And then they say it's insured. And then when you go to get your money, now all of a sudden you guys don't have the cash on hand. And you have all this debt. Then you sell all your bonds to try to pay people. And then you fail. And then if I put more money in than you said it's insured, where am I getting this money from? The people who put money in the bank, bro, like the taxpayers, like I don't, I don't understand. This isn't rocket science. Like this is a failure on so many levels, failure of the bank's management, failure of the FDIC, because like, how are you only going to insure 250,000 per account, but you know that everybody investing in the bank are large investors,